People, we are going to see limbs grow back. We are going to see amputated limbs, fleshy, mangled, bloody limbs restored through the healing power of the thunder singing God's almighty perfect dominion. We are going to see with our own eyes the day that the dead rise and walk amongst us in the everlasting glory of his sweet, righteous deliverance. I beseech you, for the sake of your eternal souls, come down to the river, or assure as heaven, the river will come for you. You know, the zombie film is, uh, is very old carnival, and um, I was carnival from the get-go. Um, those are the words of my great-grandfather, who uh, managed to con the Baptist Society in Boston out of a private railroad carriage. This beautiful velvet and wrought iron thing that would take him to the wilds of Minnesota, down to the shipyards of Mobile, to uh, preach a sermon called shun the hot green slime of lust. And I kid you not, it's a, it's a historic record. Meanwhile, he fathered 13 children while preaching that sermon. Now, uh, what, by the time it, uh, the uh, evangelical fervor sort of reached my father, the gospel spirit had been uh, a little bit diluted. Um, that didn't stop my father from baptizing me in a water hazard at the Chabot Golf Course in Oakland. And in answer to his ancestor's famous sermon, one of his, the, the great crisis in his life, the uh, spiritual dark night of the early morning, was when he happened to be playing golf alone and hit a hole in one with no one there to see it. It, it daunted him, it, it haunted him for the rest of his life. And it produced a sermon called The Sermon on the Green. All true. Now, um, I don't know if you know Matthew 18 verse 20, but it's one of my favorites. Uh, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there am I. Uh, my mother was the choir director for him, and uh, her view was, fuck that, we want a congregation because I want to have a choir. We need some people, and we've got the Methodists on the corner, we're going head to head with them, the Methodists invented American music, we've got to have a fucking choir. So, she pushed the barrier very hard. And this is uh, not far away, in space or time. This is over in Berkeley, the first congregational church on Dana between Durant and Channing. And you can go there and touch the bell that I used to sit on, you know, with uh, itchy brown short pants every Sunday. And uh, my poor father, just, just think of him for a moment. He's got the private railroad carriage passed. Famous evangelist. He's got my mother's ambition and up comes the annual Sunday school pageant. We were all very earnest young kids then. You know, the lamb lies down with the lion, the god of the lamb, and then we go eat lamb at Sunday dinner about an hour later. So my father's idea was to bring the Sunday school into the main sanctuary. Luke said, Verily I say unto you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it at all. So he brought us all in. Remember that rule of show business about kids. But he brought us in. And what's more, he wanted to pack the house. You know, it's nice to have a packed house, isn't it? Um, his idea was to get some of the street people who were then beginning to show up in greater numbers in Berkeley for a free pancake breakfast in the courtyard. It looked like magic. Now, the only thing was, it was a very simple Christmas pageant. You know, kids, show business lines. 
My mother wanted to give me the main line, but no, no, no. She, she realized the truth. There was a Catholic family in the congregation. And if you have any idea about the Protestant racket, you can appreciate the savor of winning over a Catholic family. So she decided to give the main line to the little girl, Grace Keneally. Grace had a, a, a twin brother named Horace, but he had a speech impediment, so he was out of the running. She couldn't give it to me, but Grace got the, the deal. Now, the closing line was really simple, and I want you to say it all with me, just even if you're not religious. My father would say to Grace, who is Christ? And she would say, he's Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Just say that with me, just, just, so, you could, just so you're with me. He's Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Easy, right? Well, poor little Grace, you have never seen a child strain over a line like that in your life. She was repeating it to the point where she was spare. She practiced and she practiced and she practiced. And when it came time, I don't care. I've got that God's word with me. My father said to her, I don't care. I've got God's word. My father, my father said to her, Grace, who is Christ? And she said, he's Lord of Lords. And, and she'd forgotten the line. She just dropped it. She froze. And yes, she listened to people spraying. You know, everyone can get distracted. But she said, finally, he's Lord of Lords and he's He's king of the jungle! <laughs>